Hey, aloha my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. You know, as many of you know that have been following the channel for a while, I have a CME CNC H2 Hacker Series printer uh, that I built during the Race to H2 hosted by the Jatman earlier this year. Um, and me, not being one to leave well enough alone, have of course gone on to modify and add a heat bed to it. JJ over at CME CNC was aware of this and asked me if I could try to put together a tutorial or something at least showing how I did this to try to point other people interested in it in the right direction. So this is a tutorial on how to add a heat bed to the CME CNC H2. Okay, so we have a bit of a perspective change here. So let me take you in closer and show you what I did. Um, one of the first things, not necessarily on the heat bed, but I did do the multicolor upgrade. So I had the blue rough stock arms on there. But what I did was I modified it to use an Xbox 360 power supply. And I used these four pin speak on connectors which are a twist lock and look like that. Now these are designed for commercial PA systems and they're designed to carry about 30, 35 amps per pin in there. So it's really heavy duty. For the heat bed, let me pop the glass off here. I'll slide that out. Um, this is just the Orion heat bed and if you can see it down there, there's the plate that comes with the Orion. Uh, I'll show you here in the video uh, how I drilled out that Orion plate to adapt it to fit on top of um, the H2, but this is all just the stock Orion kit. I then took the H2 glass and um, I opted, you could use binder clips, but I opted to use the Genopad uh, that you can get off of Amazon, which is one millimeter thin. and that holds it really snugly down there. Um, it doesn't look like it when I do that, but it's not sliding or going anywhere. But it pries off nice and easy if you need to take it off to clean off your bed. Okay, so that was a quick video tour of the upgrades on the printer itself. Now, let me show you what I did here, and I'll try to cover as much detail as I can, um, but still keep the video kind of short. At least give you enough information to go off of here. So the first thing that I did was I redesigned that plate um, where the where the power connector and the switch were. Uh, I'll provide the STL file for this if anybody wants it, uh, but it has the male connector for the speak. I'm sorry, the female connector for the speak on there, and I also upgraded it to a lighted switch so that I can tell when it's on or off in case something is going on. Now, here's a general picture of the wiring diagram that I came up with. Coming off of the Xbox 360 power supply, there are three wires, and these are tiny little guys, for 12 volts, uh, three wires for ground, and a slim little wire for five volts. What I did was I brought those out as a bundle to the pins. Um, technically, you don't have to bring the 5 volt line across. I brought it over so that it would be there on the connector in case I wanted to upgrade and add LEDs or something later. I would have 5 volts directly off the power supply there. Um, and then, of course, I just jumpered the ground over to the other connector using a 16 gauge wire. Um, you do have to make sure that your wiring is 16 gauge or better for most of these because you do need to make sure it can carry the current that the heat bed is going to draw. So on the other side of the connector here, this is the printer side of the connector. We pull off of pin one plus, um, we're pulling 12 volts off of that. We're going to take it to the switch. And then we're going to break that off and we're going to hit 
both of the 12 volt, the heater and the 12 volt main inputs on the mini Rambo board. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with the ground. And I also soldered on just a third wire on that ground so that I had a spare to use with the five volts. Uh, these are just currently capped and bundled under the printer right now. Now, I did use 24 gauge wiring for the five volts because it doesn't need a lot, again, just because I plan on driving some LEDs or some, maybe some fans or something with that, but it doesn't, didn't need a lot there. All of the other wiring is 16 gauge to ensure that it's um, hot enough. Now, I am not going to cover the wiring of the Orion heat bed. Um, but you do want to make sure that you use at least 16 gauge silicone wire on the bottom of that, which is not included in the Orion kit as well. And those are going to tie to the appropriate uh, places on the Rambo. You can find schematics online. Um, I will try to include a link to that down below in the comments. So when I bring those two connectors together, it basically comes out looking like this. I used quarter inch spades um, for both the speak on connector here and for the switch here and those both feed in tuck under and get looped back into the Rambo now mounting the heat bed is a different story you can see there's two parts overlaid in this picture um, the one that's shown in black is the built-in top of the H2 that comes with it. What's shown in red is the insulator plate that is included with the Orion heat bed. I basically took the, the two drawings, the two CAD drawings that CMC and C have on their GitHub, overlaid those onto each other so that I, where you see the blue dots, I was able to create a, a drill guide and I will include a, um, a PDF of this that is to scale. You can print it on an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper to scale. Basically line it up over the top plate and you can use that as a drill guide to drill the holes down into it. There's three points, four points where it actually connects to that. And the rest is kind of self-explanatory from there. Okay, so the next thing to talk quickly about is firmware. Um, while I took a long way around approach uh, for the firmware for my unit, I've since been told uh, by Ryan at CME CNC uh, via JJ that the only thing that you should need to change in the stock CME CNC firmware is to go down to this line here, 405. Um, and change the define have heated bed zero and change that to one. So it would be have heated bed one. And then compile it and load it just like you would normal firmware. And that should get your heat bed working for you. If not, um, I'm sure the guys at CBCNC would be more than happy to help you work through any issues in firmware if you uh, reach out to them. So I hope this points you in the right direction. Um, hopefully the files that are included down below will help get you on your way to adding the Orion heat bed to the CMC and CH2. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter or uh, in the comments down below and I'll try to answer your questions as best I can. Um, this was, while very quickly put out there. Anybody that's savvy enough to build the H2, I'm being a hacker series, hopefully this is enough information to point you in the right direction towards doing that. Um, and again, I didn't have it here to show you, but in the bundle down below, I will show a, or include a screenshot of the, the, the mini Rambo board with the pins circled on it where your thermistor and um, where your heat bed are going to attach to. So with that, I bid you aloha. Thank you for watching. Uh, stay tuned for future episodes of Practical Printing if you like what we're doing. 
Make sure you subscribe down below, ring the bell, and give it a big thumbs up. And we'll see you next time.